Music, the universal language to some, but if it's a language, what does it express? After all, the most influential composer of the 20th century asserted that it was powerless to express anything at all. Well, this would be the shortest TED talk ever. <laughs> but really, what can it express? Well, if we're willing to look beneath the surface, the answers may surprise us. So Colorado Symphony board member Rich Kyleberg from Aero Electronics posed the question, if we created a sound logo for Aero, what would that sound like? Their motto, Aero, five years out. Can you express that in music? Yes, we can, and here's how. So the normal musical alphabet gives us A, B, C, D, E, F, and G, but it doesn't give us R, O, or W unless we use the musical alphabet used by so many composers throughout history, where instead of simply repeating A through G, A through G you keep continuing H, I, J, K, L, M, N, et cetera, et cetera, all the way up to Z up here. So if we use that musical alphabet, we could spell arrow, A, R, R, O, W. Well, that's a little scattered. Good luck trying to sing that. So if we put it all into one register, it becomes, hey, spelling arrow melodically doesn't sound so bad. So let's continue with this idea. What if we spelled arrow rhythmically in Morse code? <laughs> if you think this is kooky, what do you see what's coming? <laughs> so let's start with A, short long. Great, we, re we repeat that. Good. What about R? Near the bottom here? I like that. It kind of develops the rhythm of A. What about O? Okay, that one's going to be a challenge. Uh, what about W up there? Ah, I like the syncopation of that. So already we've got arrow spelled melodically and rhythmically. Now let's go to that idea of five years out. There's a lot of potential here. So start with five, okay? We've already got five expressed in arrow, A, R, R, O, W, because there are five notes in that. So we're already on our way. But we could also express five by using the pentatonic scale, so named because there are five notes in it before it repeats. One, two, three, four, five, one. And looky here, our arrow idea fits the pentatonic scale. When you're a composer like me and you see a coincidence like that, it's like, yes! So, we've also got the fifth scale degree, one, two, three, four, five. Now, composers have used this fifth scale degree to represent something very triumphant many, many times through history. For example, Mahler. One, one, two, three, four, five, 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 five. So let's use that fifth scale degree to set our phrase five years out. Start on five and end on five. Five, one, five. Five years out. Sounds like winning to me. So let's just take stock of our ingredients this far. We've got arrow spelled melodically. We've got arrow spelled rhythmically. We've also got five expressed in the five letters of arrow in our five note idea. We've also got five expressed in the pentatonic scale, and we've also got five expressed in the fifth scale degree set to the phrase five years out. Now, how are we gonna use these ingredients? Let's start with the first idea, the arrow idea. We're just gonna repeat that and create a motor out of this. Now, the next thing we wanna hear is that five years out main idea. So now we get a kind of hushed, expectant fanfare in the horns. Goes down, five years out, goes up. Meanwhile, we'll hear the flute and xylophone start tapping out our Morse code starting on A. But now that five years out idea becomes its own full-fledged melody. And finally, that five years out, instead of falling, now rises to a climax five years out. And we go back to our original two ideas of arrow. 
followed by five years out. Hopefully written in a way that captures that confident optimism that is the ethos of Aero Electronics. So let's listen to just that much so far. The music continues, and unfortunately, we don't have enough time to hear the whole piece. But thank you, thank you. Yeah. But <laughs> sounds a lot better when played by my friends at the Colorado Symphony, right? Yeah. So is that it? Is that all we can express? No, 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 no. So let's go on. Let's go back to that idea of the Morse code. So if we return here, we can see that the letter V, also known as the Roman numeral five would be created as a rhythm like this. I like that. So let's use that to kind of get things started again. Now, up to this point, um, the 515 idea of five years out has been kind of dominant. New ending. But now, instead of 515, we're going to get 151. And I'll explain this a little bit later, but the really cool thing that uh, this section allows us to do is we end up modulating to the key of W. Also known as B. Uh, we'll call it B plus because there's an extra pitch right there. Now, I told you things could get a little kookier. Well, here we go. So when we get to the key of W, the flute is going to take the main theme, kind of a dark version of that, add just one note or two, and then flip it upside down to create a new theme. Now, to point out that this is an upside-down version of the original theme, the trombones are going to give that original theme so that we can hear them moving in mirror opposition. Now, if we start to think of these pitches not as just individual pitches, but tracing uh, a basic shape, that would start to look like something like this. All right, so, so that we can focus on the shape, let's get rid of the notes and the staff. All right, so it may not be clear what's happening yet, but can you see it? What about now? Or now? <laughs> so, <laughs> so <laughs> what this means is when we're in the key of W, the flute her melody is tracing a W, and because that melody is an inversion, an upside-down version of the original theme, that that means that the original theme has been tracing A all along. I didn't tell you that before, but now you know. So, Rich mentioned that, uh, you know, we hadn't really gone after this idea that what's really special about five years out is that's where, as uh, they say at Arrow, the practical meets the possible. And you move any slower than that, then you're moving too slow. Any further than that, and you're just dreaming. So can we express this idea, that magical moment of where the practical meets the possible? Yes, we can. And the method we're going to use is probably the most common method used by composers throughout history for trying to imbue their music with more meaning. And that is by quoting music that we already know the meaning of, thereby borrowing that meaning for our purpose. So you may have noticed that our five years out idea has a strong resemblance to what I think is the greatest fanfare ever written.
Copeland's fanfare for the common man. But as the piece has evolved, not just 515, but now 151, which comes from a theme meant to represent the creation of the world. Right, timpani, back and forth, right? So if we borrow the meaning from these references of the common man and creation, we can combine the man-made and the divine. This is work. This is inspiration. This is the practical. This is the possible. Now, every time we get the, the theme that our origi uh, original theme that emphasized 151, expression of the common man, now we'll get an answer with the possible using 151. So 515. And eventually the main theme itself becomes 151, the divine. that special moment when our work becomes our inspiration. Meanwhile, the violins are creating a motor that combine these two ideas, 515 and 151. As well as, we'll hear a fanfare that combines the divine and the man-made. Mankind, divine. Then we'll hear the theme that we now recognize as home. So, what does all this mean? Well, science is a study of how things happen. Invention is the combination and recombination of ideas to create new ideas. Art is the use of science and invention to try to express something. What does it express? Well, it may be something as simple as a deep sense of emotion or mood, but I hope that I've demonstrated that it also can express very tangible ideas, and I hope that we can also draw from this that in life, as in art, if we're ever looking for more meaning, we only need to look more closely at what is already there. How many times in our lives have we hoped for more love, more joy, more inspiration, more meaning? Well, art says to us, all you have to do is look a little deeper and recognize things for what they really are. And what emerges has all the meaning we could ever hope for. I'd like to thank you, but I'd also like to let music speak last. It's been an honor. Thank you.